name's Amy. I'm one of the co-founders of The Seven Effect. And hi, my name's Jodie. I'm the other co-founder of The Seven Effect. And make sure you join us for the online prosperity show where we're actually going to share with you our story of how we built a, a six-figure business working part-time as coaches and consultants and now how we help others do exactly the same. Make sure you join us. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got the double team from the Seven Effect, Amy and Jody. How are you girls doing? Great. Thank you, Prosper. And thanks so much for hunting us down and inviting us to be on your show. It's fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah, it's wonderful to be here. Absolutely. When I heard about what you guys were doing and how your project was born out of the desire to actually make your lives better in every single way that you wanted less stress and you wanted to have more fun doing what it is that you were much passionate about, I thought I had to hear your side of the story. So at the end of the day, we're here trying to help entrepreneurs to be, do and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable and looking at your guys' values and what you guys actually do at the seven effect, it really does align with what we are doing there. Now, obviously, you know, there's two of you there. It's, um, you know, a, a tag team of you guys, you know, coming together and working together. Tell us how it all came be, who approached who and was there a proposal or how did it happen? Okay, well, it's quite a story, Prosper, but I can lead with this and then Amy can fill in with any other parts that I might leave out. Amy and I actually met when we were working in the corporate world. We were both working for a leadership company and we became best mates and we got along really well. Amy headed up the events on a national scale, so she's an event master with all these skills on how to host and organise large corporate conferences and events with hundreds of people. I headed up the uh, training side of things. So I was working with leaders in the corporate world as a coach, a trainer and a facilitator. And it was really interesting in that space, I came to realise that there are a lot of people who are working full time in the corporate world who are very effective and passionate at their jobs, but just miserable in their lives. And I was becoming one of those. So my background is in small business. I'd always work for myself. I got a real job for a while, met Amy, and we were at a conference one day and Amy used to organise the conferences and I was the MC of the conference. We had all these different speakers talking about different interesting topics. And one of the speakers talked about this thing called Snow White Syndrome. And he said that it's very common for us to go through life and take a bite of the poison apple, which is the tragedy or the bad thing that happens in life. And it just so happened that Amy and my poison apple were at the same time we had relationship breakups. So we both became single again. We were both working full time, really immersing ourselves in our job, but losing sight of our health and our relationships and all of that stuff. And the speaker said that what happens is once we take a bite of the poison apple, we often lay down at an unconscious level and we wait. We wait for someone or something to come along and rescue us. And for me, as I was listening to him in that conference, it really struck a chord with me because I realised he, he calls it Snow White Syndrome because of the things we're conditioned with. We all have the same fairy tales growing up. I realised in that moment that I had a chronic case of Snow White Syndrome. I was just rocking up each day, going to work, existing, going through the motions, and I'd forgotten about all the goals that I used to set, all the travel that I used to do, and all the freedom and excitement I used to have in my life when I was an entrepreneur and a business owner. And so I left that conference on a bit of a conference high, and I decided to write a message out to some of my girlfriends, obviously Amy being one of them, and told them about Snow White Syndrome and said, instead of us meeting at the pub once a month for a social catch-up, let's catch up once a month and set goals and hold each other accountable. And so it wasn't a business that was initially born, it was a goals club. And there were seven of us in the goals club, me, Amy, and five other girls. 
And we did that for four and a half years. Every month we'd show up, we'd set our goals and our lives started to change phenomenally. And because I was sharing my story as a public speaker in the leadership realm and teaching people on goal setting, I was amazed at how many people came up to me and said, Jodie, how do I get in the club? How do we join the goals club? So I went back to the girls and I said, look, I think there's a business in this. And long story short, Amy, because of her background and the fact that we work together, saw the opportunity the same way I did. And with the blessing of the other five girls, we took the name of Seven Effect and we created a business initially with a goals club. And then it's grown and evolved into so many other things since then. So, yeah, it's an interesting story. Oh, wow. Amy, did you want to add anything? Did I forget anything there? Yeah, no, no, I think that's everything. And I think that's the beautiful thing about it is it has, it started with a goals club. We've, we, you know, had this kind of, um, beta testing <laughs> with just you know with friends and having this thing as a group and we've realized we i guess you know with with businesses that the proof is in the pudding that it worked for us with what we were doing and we set up lots of systems and tools and and you know our seven elements and the way to do things um and that really then worked with the group and then obviously talking about it well there's our test case out there to the market that people were actually like well how do i join this so obviously there, there was the business in there so and yeah, it's just gone from strength to strength ever since we, we took on and launched in May 2014. Great stuff. Well, congratulations. There's something about the number seven in everything that you guys have been saying. Didn't yeah. Snow White have seven dwarves? Yes, she did too. Isn't, I hadn't thought of that connection actually, Prosper. Yeah, she did. All right. <laughs> we don't wolves in our business though <laughs> <laughs> great stuff but that that is quite intriguing in as much as um all of this has come around through um you know working around the um the number seven so your business now stepped on from being a goals club with seven girls and um care to know what happened to the other five or is that a matter yeah. that the police are investigating right now <laughs> <laughs> They're dead and buried in the backyard. No, not really. No, what happened is they, because we were on this journey of setting personal goals, many of them had their own goals uh, to do their own thing. So get into property renovation. So one of them, um, Naomi, we do a lot of stuff in collaboration. We had a breakfast event and she was a speaker at our event. She's got her own property development and, and property renovation company that she's built as a result of working on goals. Some of the other girls just decided they wanted to take their careers in other directions. So their goals, personal goals, weren't to be business owners, but they said, we will be raving fans, we'll be clients, um, but we just don't want to build the business with you. Um, they just wanted to, to be part of a goals club. So we're all still great mates. There's no uh, love loss there. It was just that Amy and I were genuinely looking for a way to get out of our jobs and build a business. So we started teaching goals clubs, but our real, I guess, the money that we made and what allowed us to quit our jobs so quickly was to offer leadership uh, training. So that's what we knew. We were recognised in the world of leadership. So the goals club was what we wanted to do. The leadership stuff is what we knew the market needed and where we could make money. Now, interestingly, three years later, our real focus is on helping people build lifestyle businesses as a coach, consultant or expert. So it's doing everything Amy and I have done in the last three years to package up and create their own escape from the race business plan. Understandable. Lucky you're with Amy, right? Yes. <laughs> I know, we need that tune. <laughs> Great, sir. So now, obviously, within um, this duo, Amy happens to be the method from what you're telling me. And she brings in, you know, the practical and the systematic approach to the business itself. Amy, can you just walk us through what it actually takes to take a business from a pub and talking and writing notes on a napkin to actually creating, um, you know, a, a lucrative business like you guys have created? What, what actually, you know, is involved? Yeah, well, it's actually quite funny in terms of now working with people, with, with clients to actually start their own coaching or consulting business um, because the first step is like, oh, I've got to get a website, I've got to get this, I've got to get, you know, people are really focused on, um, oh, a logo and a this and a that and all of the, 
those sorts of, I guess, um, the systems and structure type things, but they're not really what you need to get going. Like, it, you know, we really teach, we get people to, you know, we go through beliefs and vision, actually getting really clear on their product, what their offering is, and then really starting to build a community. So I guess in terms of the systems and structures in building a community, that's then the first step in terms of, you know, if it's a Facebook group, if that's where, I guess, your online presence lies. Um, it might be LinkedIn and a LinkedIn group, if that's where, you know, your presence, depending on, you know, who your target market is or your avatar is for your business. Um, so I guess as well, we've come a bit full circle because it did, it, it used to be like, okay, well, I'm, I'm setting up this business. I've got to have a website. You know, I've got to have, you know, a, a domain and hosting. I've got to have all these sorts of things. But nowadays you can almost get away with a, um, a Facebook page or a LinkedIn page. You don't, you don't need a, a website and, and all those other things um, that are there. So I actually kind of, well, both of us do kind of steer people away from using, because that can be a form of a distraction or procrastination or um, it's like, oh, well, I'll just spend time designing my website rather than actually going out and telling people about my business and what I want to do. <laughs> so it can be a bit of an avoidance thing. So, um, so for us, but we did go down that path. So, we, you know, we got the website set up, but we had our Facebook page and really worked on building that as a community and having a presence on Facebook. Because when we started in 2014, you know, that was, that was what you did and what you do. So, um, yeah, getting everything set up. I guess as well, Jody will probably um, laugh with this, but I do, my first and foremost when I'm looking for anything is like, what's the free um, online option for setting up your structure and business? Or, you know, or the most cost effective. I'm, I'm quite cheap <laughs> with things, but it I keep is. things, I am, I'm really cheap. But I, I think, you know, when you're starting out, you've got to, you've got to keep things low cost and keep them really simple. Um, when you're starting out, you need to probably... Well, you do need to understand how everything works together and, and, you know, be able to fix things quickly and manage things quickly. And then as you grow um, and start to build, you know, a team around you, like, like we do now. So we've now got a, uh, you know, an email systems marketing guy on board that also looks after our Facebook and we've got a virtual assistant to look after our administration. And now we've got a bookkeeper and an accountant that, you know, does all those sorts of things. But, you know, I really try to get people to steer away from getting all of these things set up from the get-go and where, where time and money could be wasted rather than really focusing on like, well, what is your business? Who's your target market? Who's your avatar? What products are you bringing to the market? So, um, so yeah, it's, it, I guess it's, um, we've, we're, we're teaching people what we've learned along the way and, and that's how we've, you know, got to where we are now and, and growing. So we're, we're now looking at getting experts on board rather than the whole do-it-yourself thing. But, in the beginning, it is a, a do it yourself, but keep things really, really simple and don't spend too much time wasted on the perfect logo, the perfect, you know, as long as people can kind of see what you're about, they know where to, they, you know, they can find you and find your information, then that's really the best start. It's so true. You should get a customer before you build a website. Get a customer first. Yeah. yeah. Understandable. So obviously, um, half of the things that, you know, small to medium business people would do is exactly what you just mentioned there, um, Amy, that people would go in and, you know, run and make sure that they're looking good in front of the world while nothing is happening behind the scenes there. Now, Jody, your expertise is basically um, in and around small to medium business businesses since you also did run a small business yourself. Um, what sort of frustrations are you finding that people that end up coming to you guys are facing, you know, as, um, as a small business that things are not working within their business that, you know, that you guys can solve for them. I think the biggest challenge that people face is valuing themselves enough to charge for their time appropriately. So setting up a viable business model. I've been a panel member um, for a new venture institute and it's amazing to me how many people want to create these social enterprises that have no commercial viability to them. And it's about saying, where do you recognise your value and then how do you find the confidence to charge for that out in the marketplace? So one of the things, as Amy said, we always begin with is vision and beliefs first and foremost and the other thing that I think people genuinely struggle with is being a consultant so we mainly work with coaches consultants and experts but being someone that is high value 
that clients are willing to pay, you know. So our, our, our half day rate for a workshop is 3,500 that we charge to corporate clients or 4,500 4, for a full day. Now, a lot of people would go, well, how do you get clients to pay that for one day's work? But the reality is we know the problems, the solutions, and how to get the result in that short space of time. Our clients have quite often spent $20,000 or more plus 10 trying to solve the problem. If we can go in there for half a day for $3,500, it's a bargain in the grand scheme of things. So I think the biggest issue is Many of the people, when they start working with us, they have no idea how they can ever hit six figures working part-time, which was our goal. That was our mission in building our business. And they don't understand how to be high value and how to leverage their time. And that's what we teach them to do. One of the first things we do is we've got this wonderful calculator that we take people through and we help them map out what is your six-figure perfect product mix where you can work out how much money you want to earn, how many hours a day or a, a month you want to work, and what is the smartest, most effective way to get there. And once you're clear on that, like Amy said, the most important thing is just getting focused on delivering the results because so many people waste time fluffing about with colour swatches and logo designs and hiding behind the scenes of building a pretty um, brochure and we just say to our clients, don't do that. Go out and speak to someone and get them as a client first. I don't, we don't even use brochures in our own business. We send clients an email with dot points and say this is a $1,500 coaching program. Here's what we'll cover they get the email and they sign off. No pretty brochure required. Understandable. Well, absolutely phen phenomenal because with all that comes one of your seven elements, which is the part of the brain. I mean, yeah. people are already in tune with the way it's always been like this. You know, that's the way they've always known how to do it. How do you then help them expand their potential and really develop a positive mindset to actually now start understanding that it's not about the logo or, and don't tell me to wear a tie that matches my shirt, but it's not about the logo. It's, it's not about reducing stress. It is really actually about uh, making sure you're expanding your bottom line. Yeah. Um, that's a great question, Prosper. And so Amy and I are both qualified uh, with NLP and hypnosis. So we did a diploma of modern psychology. Um, and the reason I did that was because after 10 years of working in the corporate world, trying to get leaders to do the things they know they should be doing, but they refuse to do, and trying to get change to, to stick, I felt like I was bashing my head against, against a brick wall and I said, what is it about human behaviour that prevents people from doing what they know they should be doing and they're just not doing it? So the solution is in, as you said, the brain, but it's the unconscious part of the brain. And so we do a lot of work around beliefs. We use neuro-linguistic programming. We also use hypnosis to actually tap into that unconscious part of the brain that people aren't aware of why they're doing the things they do. And we teach them how to train that so that the unconscious and the conscious are both pointing in the same direction. Does that make sense? A lot of sense. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, at the end of the day, um, people are, you know, humans are creatures of habit. So whatever it is that they are already exposed to or whatever it is that they already know um, is, is the way things are supposed to be doesn't really mean that that's the way to go and so if you can tap into their unconscious and get them to focus on where their business should actually go obviously they'll get different results to what they're actually uh, doing right now was it Einstein or one of the clever guys that says that if you continuously do the same things what happens yes, and the it's, definition it's, of insanity yes yeah. yes yeah. Exactly. So obviously in and around this whole working around your business as a coach, consultant, or, you know, an expert in your business, you guys also work on increasing people's energy and their vitality through sort of healthy habits. Walk us through one of those elements and why it's essential because all I do is sit around on my desk. Why do I need to 
be energetic and why do I need to increase vitality in my business while wasting time instead of you said fetch clients. Do you want me to lead with that, Ames, and then you can pick up yeah. after? Yep. So our seven elements of life started, as I said before, Prosper, when I was working as a coach with so many leaders, I realised that they had lost sight of their confidence, that they were stressed in the brain, their physical health was going to, to rack and ruin, relationships, etc. So we came up with the seven elements of life, which is brain which is mindset body physical well-being um the being which is your home environment and your spaces love which is relationships time money and passion so we in a life design process work people through all those elements of life because what we've found is whether you are an employee working for an organization or you are a business owner and entrepreneur trying to build your own business and we do this in the very first module of our business building program. If you're not clear on where you are in each of those seven elements of life and where you want to be, ideally, busyness will take over and you're just going to get in a funk. And I've met so many business owners that wanted to create a business for their ultimate freedom. Everyone who says, I want to build a business, why do they want to do it? Because they want freedom. They want to be their own boss. Now, many business owners end up with working much more hours for much less money and much higher stress. So from the get-go, one of the things we do, Prosper, is we go, right, let's look at the seven elements of your life and then look, let's look at the seven elements of business and let's work out where you are now. We have a, a life audit that we do that with. And then more importantly, where do you want to be ultimately? What does 10 out of 10 look like for you? And let's design your business around that 10 out of 10 picture. So for Amy and I, 10 out of 10 was a business where we worked three days a week, where we still earned six figures a year, where we never worked school holidays, where we travelled overseas every single year. And we designed this 10 out of 10 life where we both were our healthy, optimal weight. We were having living a healthy lifestyle. And over the years, we just worked towards that. And you find that you just get happier and more effective and more productive. And then you become a living example because one of the other things I say to coaches and consultants is if you look sloppy, stressed, unhealthy, I'm sorry, but people aren't going to invest in you to be their coach or consultant. You've got to sort your own life out before you can even take money to sort others out, if that makes sense. Understandable. You wouldn't buy from a skinny chef, would you? No, that's right. <laughs> a healthy one, sure, if they're a chef that's talking about healthy food. But, you know, it's like I'm not going to uh, seek positive uh, coaching from someone who's completely miserable and negative about the word, the world. Yeah. Great stuff. Now, we're going to be going into the one thing that Amy likes the most because um, your area is in facilitating um, workshops and making sure that they are running smooth, right? Yeah, the, the organisation side of it and the management. Yeah, it's, it's sort of, it's what I um, have grown up doing. So I come from a hospitality hotel background and it's quite funny. Jodie um, teases me of like, oh gosh, you're such a good worker when I helped her out with stuff as in like just, you know, because I've grown up with, you talk about conditioning and your mindset that you've had. I've grown up with this, if you've got time to lean, you've got time to clean sort of mindset. And that's, <laughs> that's where I've come from. So I've always... You know, I do like to keep moving and always keep busy. So that's been my big uh, mindset shift in our own business is realising that I don't have to work 24-7 and I don't have to keep running and moving all the time. But that, that's another story. But that's, yeah, that's sort of where I've come from. That's my background. Great stuff. All right. I'm sorry we won't be tipping you for this show, but would you let us know a little bit about, um, you know, your guys' ultimate life planning workshop? How does that all work out? Do you want me to do that one, Amy, or you? So yeah. the Ultimate Life Planning Workshop is our flagship program. It's the very first program that we designed to take out to the public world and say, the seven effect has arrived. Let us teach you all the things that we've been doing for the last five years that have transformed our life. And so in the Ultimate Life Planning Workshop, the tagline is invest a day and design a life. So we take people through 
the seven elements of life. We talk about how to identify where you are now with the life order and setting goals. We call it the dare to dream. Where do you want to be? What's your 10 out of 10 look like? Then we look at how to break that down through monthly accountability. What are your 12-month goals? Along the way, we explore fears, barriers and stumbling blocks. And we teach people how to pluck those out of their unconscious mind and replace them with much more um, empowering or uh, productive type beliefs about what's really possible in life. Because I think one of the biggest things, Prosper, is most people go through life treading carefully and playing safely. If I can just, you know, show up each day, have a safe job, go home at night, pay the bills, keep the electricity running and put food on the table, then maybe one day I can retire. And we say, if you actually want to live life large, then wake up, like wake up from Snow White syndrome and actually design your life. Make it how you want it to be, believe it's possible, and then start moving towards it one goal at a time. And it's totally doable. Amy and I are living, living examples. So that workshop is exactly how we did it in a day. And we leave people with all the tools that they need to be able to go off and do it as well. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, you guys have just been here for 15 minutes and my whole life has changed. Um, oh. so <laughs> it, is, it is absolutely phenomenal. Now, how can people get a hold of um, you at the 7 Effect then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they can um, jump onto our website. So it's www.the7effect. So the number 7 and effect with an E.com. And they'll be able to kind of find information there. If you're on Facebook, you can search The 7 Effect um, and we'll pop up there and we share lots of different content, you know, business and lifestyle lessons, um, as well as the events and things that we've got coming up. So, you know, we love to hear from people, whether it's, a, you know, an email via the website or, you know, a message via a Facebook page. Um, yeah, you can pretty much find us there or LinkedIn we're even on Instagram. We're not very good on Instagram. It's just, you know, we've got it there, but it's Facebook mainly and the website. And the website is just all getting updated at the moment. So um, there's lots of new information on there with um, what's coming up with our, yeah, our last workshops for the year. We've got a masterclass. We've got the ultimate life planning workshop and we've got our end of year fundraiser celebration, which is cocktails and dreams. So yeah, there's lots of opportunities to come along and hear what we do and see what we're all about. Yeah, and, and one of the things, if I can just add, Prosper, so we have our free, we have a free life audit program so people can go through the life audit themselves. So if anyone wants to reach out to us, we can send the information on how to jump in and go through the life audit. It's an online video program. But also, uh, one of the things I love doing, and our business has evolved, so we weren't leaders, they were miserable, we went, right, lifeline, let's help people design a life. One of the biggest goals that comes when you work with people for over a year in a goals club to design their life is they go, I want what she's having. I want to be a coach consultant. I want to escape my, my job and build a business. That's my real passion is helping people build a business. So if there is anyone out there watching or listening that would like to go through that free process that I talked about with the calculator, and I'm happy to spend 30 minutes for free. Um, they can email me directly, jody at the7effects.com.au. And I can just take them through the process to say, well, this is what we do at the 7 Effects. So, um, yeah, happy to do that as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for making yourself available, um, you know, to our audience. And I'm supposing that if you're watching this show right now, you would have learned a thing or two or seven regarding how you two can be, do, and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. I mean, Jody and Amy have had a wealth of experience learning how to, you know, get out of the funk and actually the true elements that help you um, understand where you are and where you're actually going by setting the goals and also giving you the guidelines through their ultimate um, you know, seven effect uh, workshop there and also the free tool that she's just pointed out there. Now, Jody, we might have Sally or Lucy or Jack that's just sitting in the audience right now and they're sitting on the fence, not quite sure if they should actually leave their job and go into obscurity without knowing what's out there at the other end of the line. Just a couple of words to strengthen them or 
to just tell them to forget about it and keep working. Oh, that is such a good point because I have to say entrepreneurship is not for everybody and some people are better off in a job. It depends on, and this is where it's very valuable to actually invest in a coaching session. Before you do anything crazy, speak to a professional coach or someone who's actually built a business and ask them questions about what it really takes not the glorified, you know, overnight success, but what you really have to do behind the scenes to show up and make this work and get a sense of would you be prepared? Do you believe that you can do it? And if you don't believe, are you willing to invest in building that belief to a level of unwavering belief where you go, you know what, no matter what, no matter the challenges, no matter the rejection, no matter the fear, I'm going to make this happen because I want it more than anything. If you can get there, then go for it. I would say anything is possible and a business could be yours. If you are, mm, I don't know if I could do it. I'm not really sure I'm very good. I, 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 I worry that people wouldn't trust me or value me. And, and if you're in that space, don't do it yet. Get out of that space before you do it or work with a coach to get yourself out of that space. So it's a, it's a great question, Prosper, and I really love that. Yeah, absolutely. Amy, what have you got to say for yourself? Yeah, well, I think that's exactly right with, with moving. There's, you, I guess when you see things on social media in any format, you're looking at how someone is now. You don't get the behind the scenes, the journey, what they've gone through to get to where they are. So I think people can sometimes be like, oh, well, this could answer all of my problems um, without really addressing what their problems are themselves, all that, you know, all the unconscious stuff. And, and because the thing is, is if, you know, this stuff still keeps coming up, like from my personal experience, I've, you know, I haven't come from having my own business. I've come from, you know, being employed and, and working for somebody else. So for me, it, it comes up and I have to work through it, you know, through the business, it, you know, it's still things come up and that's because they're all, you know, in my unconscious and in my beliefs. And it's sort of like, I, I, you know, I'm still constantly working on myself um, every day so that um, I can keep, keep doing this. Um, yeah. Cause it's, it's not, um, it's not just all the, the red carpet bells and whistles and, and things, you know, from an event background, people always think, Oh yeah, I want to run events and manage events because they just see the red carpet and the lights. And the, I guess to follow on from exactly what Jody is, has said in, in, you know, getting your, beliefs and, and everything sorted before you jump into your own business because people see you know the end result on social media or I guess from an events background with a with a metaphor there people see the red carpet and the you know the photographer and this sort of kind of glamorous end result they don't see <laughs> you know the 20 hour days and the you know all the planning and the stress and the anxiety and the all the sorts of things that you know come along with then making sure something like that of an event you know, runs to plan. So I think that's that's a great thing of getting really clear on, yep, is this for me? If there are any niggling little issues or anything, getting those sorts of things sorted out first before you jump in. You know, for me as well, I, I do come from that being employed type background. I'm not, I, you know, I haven't been a business owner, but, you know, my parents had been, but, you know, I, I still saw them work crazy hours. So they were very much, you know, you know, I guess tied to the job as well growing up. So I'm still working through things that come up for me, um, you know, in, in making sure that I can, um, yeah, keep going with my role in the business and, and having this lifestyle and, and living what we do, um, yeah, rather than getting caught up in this, you know, busyness of, of just, you know, making myself busy <laughs> and there comes the stress <laughs> and anxiety. So I think, you know, when you when you see the end result, you don't necessarily see what's what the path is, has been trained to get there absolutely because so, it does take you know ten thousand hours to perfect um any you know talent or whatever skill you might have and in the case of athletes that you know end up at the olympics they train for four years or eight years only for them to be seen for 20 seconds winning that race so people should really be well acquainted with what happens behind the scenes before they literally jump in head first well ladies i can't thank you enough for your time your energy and the expertise that you dropped on this show today and um you know the, the, the vibe you brought in this is well and truly going to be the best episode we've had um throughout this whole season thank you so much 
Oh, thank you so much for having us, Prosper. It's wonderful to meet you. And it's a real honour to be able to connect with you and your community. And like you said, our vision and our purpose and mission is very aligned. So we love what you do. And we're excited to be, to be a small part of it. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, I can't thank you enough. And if you're watching this uh, show right now, if you haven't subscribed to this uh, show, first of all, you get to miss out on lovely faces like this. And second of all, you've just realized the value that um, all these people get to bring because we are here to live, we're here to learn, and we're here to contribute. And you can't learn from making the, um, from your own mistakes. You get to learn from other people's mistakes and if you're not going to be listening from people that have been through it then how else are you going to learn well ladies thank you so much for your time and this has been a lovely episode thank you